Right folks, today as part of the whole process of sustainable corporate and information governance, a really critical problem is that of business continuity and management. How many of you come across the, the term before? Anybody? Disaster recovery? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, several more have seen, heard of disaster recovery. Well, what we're going to be looking at is not just how do you sort things out after the event, but what sort of planning and sort of policies and strategies do you need to put in place before that you get there? And so that when things do go wrong, you can recover very, very rapidly. But the main thing is to try and avoid the problems happening in the first instance. Uh, just a brief one. Uh, have you seen that the mid-semester survey is up there? Have you filled it in? I'm not going to look, uh, look around to see who hasn't yet, but um, it'd be very good to have input like now. Uh, then, because that's going to affect, may affect what happens in the next two or three weeks, but it'll certainly affect, have the opportunity to affect what happens in enterprise systems and information security assurance next semester. Don't think that you have any more business school modules, do you now, next term? No, that's all right, because we have had problems, as you know, that the standards for writing bibliographies and citing and referencing can be different in the different, for different academics. And again, even between me and Dennis and Fionn, sometimes we'll do things with very specific purpose in mind. So sometimes we'll say, we do want that bibliography of every source you've ever seen, as your reading list, other times we just say, like in this mo module, only those sources which you've actually cited. And I tend to be much more relaxed, and Dave Voorhees as well, uh, about how the citation works. The, the true official rigorous version, say, of Harvard is that when you cite a quotation, a direct quotation, then you can put the page number but otherwise don't, is the official rule. However, I take a much more pragmatic view that citing and reference is all about helping the reader who might be interested in finding your sources. In which case, now if the book is about that thick, a thousand pages, and you don't tell me where your bit comes from, I'm not going to bother to find it, it's too difficult. So it's always helpful to be put in additional information like page numbers or chapter numbers in a citation just to help the reader. But remember that is not the true formal standard, so check what your uh, lecturer is wanting to do. We'll do the debate on, if you've done any reading over the week, on strengths and weaknesses of risk, benefits and uncertainty management. We'll have a little chat after the uh, I've talked about the, the business continuity. There will be applications to the assignment almost certainly because we're looking at uncertainty in terms of the uncertain veracity of all of our data. So that kind of links back in here. But let's start off with onto the business continuity issues. Here is the definition from British Standard, ISO Standard 25999. Easy to get hold of, folks. Strongly advise you to get your copy uh, downloaded from BSOL. It's all about the stra strategic and tactical capability of the organisation to plan for and respond to incidents, organisational disruptions, in order to continue business operations at an acceptable and predefined level. And this is very, very different from what we used to have in the sort of 80s uh, and before, where it was, what do we do when things go wrong, but hey, we haven't got time, we'll just handle it when the place burns down, when we have a major uh, incident, floods and so on. So that's the definition. We can also have a look at what does um, 
what's the next stage? In terms of actually managing what has happened, it's how do we recover back to where we, go, where we should be? How do we continue our business activities? And it then looks at the really broad picture of before, during, and after. So we put together a total program of activities for different sorts of events. But it makes a point that we need to train people. We need to give people practice, a real life event. I mean, over the last few weeks we've had one of those things practiced. We've had several practice events when the fire alarms have been triggered so as to make sure that we all know how to get out of the tower blocks, out of the atrium, out of the labs here, and where to congregate. And last time we did it out of the two towers, we all ended up between these two buildings, between T block and B block, and we were all sort of stuffed up the end there, when we should actually have been out in the car park. And it wasn't until someone came along and uh, told us, oi guys, out into the car park, that many people realise we're in the wrong place. We should be out over there. That's where the congregation place is. And uh, so you've got to do some exercises. And then after those exercises, review what went well, what didn't go so well, why, what should be done better next time, and how do we get people to do better next time. And then we also have to review how relevant the plans that we've got are, and have they been affected by any changes in the environment, <coughs> changes in the way things work. Now, <clears throat> what I want you to do when we finish this little input, first of all, use something like Wikipedia, Google, to find some ideas about business continuity, business continuity planning, and business continuity management. There are three stages. One is the overview of the whole thing. And then the next two are, what do we do up front? And what do we do during and after those three sections? To do, then the next bit of research is to go to British Standards Online through Athens, through our own uh, the library portals, and download those British Standards which are relevant to this topic. And the third part is there's an awful lot of uh, websites out there which are uh, provided by professional organisations who actually focus on business continuity, business continuity planning and management and so on. This, th these won't give you any citations or references because you're not allowed to reference and cite and reference uh, Wikipedia as you well know, but at least it'll give you an overview, they'll help you find links because there'll be lots and lots and lots of references in there that'll link you to other interesting sources. These ones, these bottom two, are the ones where you're going to find the sources to put into your working bibliography. Now, if you go back to see that bottom one, find out these sort of things. These will give you lots of sources so that you can get, find some definitions, many definitions of business continuity or planning. So what I want you to do then is to do a critical analysis of your various different definitions of business continuity planning to see what are the really critical common themes and ideas. And as you go through your research then and thinking your discussion around the, t the groups here, that critical analysis is going to help you to work out what these definitions mean in the context of the professional organisations. Remember, the professional organisations who provide websites about business continuity, planning and management are, the, are made up of people who are very, very active as professionals in the field. They know more about it than almost anybody else. They probably contributed to some extent, to the um, ISO standards even. So they have a lot of very, very up-to-date information, like as of you know, within the last few weeks. 
Potentially. And out of that is going to come with your critical analysis. Answers to things like, like these two questions here. What are the critical key tasks that allow you to develop a strong, effective business continuity plan in an organization? So what's the tasks that need to be done? And then secondly, because it's all very easy to create programs of things that need to be done, but it's very difficult to carry out the change management with people. People don't like changing. They don't like doing things that interrupt their activity of keeping the customer happy. Whether it's the internal customer, the next person up the chain that they're doing jobs for, or whether it's a person outside who the company is selling uh, services and goods to. Now, those we feel are the important thing, and all this stuff, you know, just like security, we don't like security because it kind of gets in the way of doing things, it's expensive. Business continuity planning, we think, it's not going to happen, so why bother? So what is it that needs to be done in an organisation <coughs> to make it effective in terms of people doing the right thing? And that we can call culture. Because culture is, can be easily defined as the way that we do things here. And so what is the way that, needs, that we do things here, or there, that will allow an effective business continuity plan to be developed, put in place, and then actually operated effectively? So we now understand what business continuity is and the planning and management and strategies and so on. All very nice and theoretical. Let's turn it into real life then. Think about finding some really good case studies of where the whole thing has worked very, very well. And then find another two or three, four cases where business continuity didn't happen, wasn't implemented, or it failed to protect the organization for one reason or another. So find at least six case studies, three of each, for success and failure. Your critical analysis then becomes in the successful ones, what were the common themes, the common aspects that actually appear to have been there that helped to make it successful? And in the failure cases where really bad things happened, again, what are the common themes? And then, <coughs> having dug out what these various common themes are, then again, a second stage of critical analysis is what were the differences between the successful and the unsuccessful ones. Why was it that some organisations can be successful? Why was it that in some instances organisations got wiped out? One or two interesting examples I can sort of now cover the basics of a theory of what you're going to do over the next, during this week. A couple of interesting examples. Quite a few years ago, um, Primark, I think it was, from memory, had a huge fire at their big warehouse down, sort of halfway down the motorway from here down to London. And their computer, one of their computer centres was also there. It got uh, completely wiped out. However, because they had got a really effective business continuity plan in place, it had no effect on their business. They had a backup computer center up and running within 24 hours, carrying on the business. <coughs> they had very, very clever distribution backups in place so that all the stuff that was on, in lorries on the way to their main warehouse, the distribution center, were suddenly diverted from the distribution centre to the individual shops. 
so that they could carry on delivering goods to the shops. There might have been a 48 hour hiccup while they kind of got slightly organized, but they were back up and running before the, um, the racks started getting empty. They got the computer system running, as I say, within 24, 48 hours. Because they planned it all out. They thought about what happens if a sort warehouse burns down. And they'd come up with the answer, OK, we need to be able to contact our distribution chain to divert those deliveries from the centre to our shops. An example of the opposite happened, again, quite close to Derby, uh, just over at Eccle, on what used to be an old airfield, is now a big housing estate. But on it, there were, it used to have a whole load of old hangars. And there was a company there, I don't know, remember its name, but it was involved in doing a lot of cardboard work. They were making big, big uh, cardboard boxes for shipping uh, air, um, aerospace components between the UK and uh, Airbus down in Toulouse in France. Cardboard and pallets and wood are kind of inflammable. And one night at about just after midnight, between what, midnight and two o'clock, the place caught fire. And it took a while for things, to, A, for it to get noticed, and B, for the fire pe people to get there. Slightly unfortunately, their computers, their servers, were in a little uh, room inside that big uh, hangar. And it got destroyed in the fire as well. Unfortunately, they didn't have any back off-site backups of any of the databases, of any of the systems. And they had everything burnt, a whole lot. Totally destroyed. And no backups. They very nearly went out of business. If it hadn't been the fact that they were supporting very, very important companies like Rolls-Royce and Airbus, who were able to help them get set up again uh, on some Rolls-Royce property. And they got Rolls-Royce and other uh, support to help set up or reset up their computing uh, environment. But that took several months to do. That company nearly went out of business. If you think about the small businesses down in town, small insurance company uh, brokers or financial services advisors and so on, three, four people in an office. If they have a fire and they don't have sort of one of these sort of hard drives or uh, that they take with them when they leave the office, put somewhere safe. If they have a fire and lose all of their computer systems, the likelihood is about 99% of all those companies will never, ever recover. Doesn't matter how much insurance you have, for the buildings and equipment and so on. If you have lost all of your data about your customers and so on, you'll never get started again. <coughs> so there's all sorts of serious consequences and good consequences if you do your business continuity planning and management and if you don't. And you can use ISO 27002 as part of your checklist of the things that are critically important in relation to ISO 25999, the business continuity side of things. So there's linkages between the different ISO standards as well, the different parts. So you've got, we now begin to build up an interesting portfolio of ISO standards, ISO 20000, ISO 25000 the series, 25999 for business continuity, 9000 for how you do your business and make sure you do what you say you're going to do, and so on. So all of these knit together as part of the sort of strategies you're going to need for good quality, effective um, information governance and corporate governance as well. So lots of interesting ideas there that can pull together to give you a stronger strategy for good information and corporate governance, a sustainable information and corporate governance. As you think about the question of the assignment, which is we've got lots and lots and lots of data out here around us. And we don't really know which is, which is correct, which is accurate, and so on. That uncertain veracity problem. 
you need to start thinking about all of these questions as you build those strategies for governance to protect your organisation. Okay, folks. Thanks. That's the input. Now back to your research and developing your assignments.